Hi and welcome to another Frivolous Love episode. Today I'm bringing you a review on this little cutie which is the Lisa Eldridge Myth palette. I only have one, sorry I'm not rich. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you want to know my impressions on this eyeshadow palette, just keep on watching and thank you for sticking around if you do. So, uh, if you know me, if you've known me for any amount of time, you know I really love, uh, and when it comes to parasocial relationships on the internet, Lisa Eldridge is one of my babes. I really like her. I like her serenity, the way she so generously shares her knowledge uh, and her skills and her tips and tricks of the trade on YouTube for free for everybody to watch, how she donates to charities, all the revenues of a channel, that's amazing, and uh, how innovative she is because before Becca liquid highlighters were a thing on anyone's head, she already had them in her kit. That's, that's, that's looking way ahead of everybody else. So yeah, and her artistry is amazing. She's a wonderful makeup artist. I love that she geeks a lot over a makeup history and I love her book, I have it. And of course, when she launched her makeup um, line, I had to try as much as I could at least one product from each category that she's, she's been launching. I don't have all the colors nor a full collection, but I have quite a few things. And I've had great experiences with basically all the products. Her lipsticks are, in my opinion, iconic. Uh, the foundation is great. The liquid highlighter is amazing. I love the lid lusters, the lip pencils. And now she has eyeshadows. I mean, I had to try those, right? Um, if you remember on the day of the launch, hmm, there was this little delay because Lisa, as my kindred spirit kind of thing, uh, she talks a lot and they had to cut down the video <laughs> on the day, which was a bit weird, but fine. It delayed all the launches. And in the evening when it finally came out, I went and ran to see it a bit behind everybody else but still exchanging um, some messages with friends everybody super excited and during the video launch I was I noticed four things one the obvious the packaging is amazing it's beautiful it's gorgeous and uh, hmm, I love it personally second thing and I squealed a bit when I saw it is that you can pop out the eyeshadows and buy singles and mix and max mix mix and match your own color stories, which if you know me, I think that should be mandatory for every single brand out there. Just my opinion. Um, they are the singles are more expensive than buying. I mean. If you think of the palette as six singles, the palette is around 60 euros and the singles, if you buy them single, <laughs> will, would be about 14 euros. So it gets a bit more expensive than buying a palette if you're buying a big bundle of singles. Uh, let's put it that way. And they don't have, for now, the empty palette. So you will have to get a palette and then buy extra singles if you want to you know, mix and match or more than one palette if, if you can afford it. So yeah, but I really like the fact that you can take in and out all the shades and all of that rearrange. I like that. But um, the third thing that I noticed when Lisa started applying the eyeshadows was that it seemed like magic because they were blending on themselves and blurring themselves, which was I really need to try those eyeshadows. That was what occurred to me. And then the last thing was that, although I loved several shades in each palette, I wasn't in love with the one palette. There wasn't one that became the one for me in terms of color story, which is interesting. Um, so if you know me, Muse and Cinnabar are not kind of like my types because, you know, warm neutrals, fine, perfect, and if you only use those, it's an investment uh, that you can make if, if the product is good 
you just pay more for something that you use the most. I think that makes sense. But for me, I was kind of like into sorcery because of the jewel tones and Vega because it brought me that kind of smoky eye, black and white, high contrast thing, and then myth because of the magentas. And also it had the capability to make, you know, a smoky eye with the more neutral shades in the palette. So I was very torn, but the internet chose for me because when I got to the website, Vega and Sorcery was sold out. I know that Vega eventually returned. It must have been, you know, one of those moments where people make mistakes and buy extras and then return them. But anyway, when I got to the website, there was only myth available. I got my myth and I got out of there before I got tempted, tempted with something else. And that's what I have today to talk to you about. I'm going to talk about myth. Keep in mind, she has more textures in her eyeshadows, uh, in her formulas, than the ones that I have here because here you only have one top coat, one metallic, and then you have four velvets, which are kind of the cream to powder formula, similar-ish to Natasha Denona cream to powder. So those are the textures that I can review for you today. And these are the colors that I have to review for you today with my impression. Now, first thing, the performance of the velvets, beautiful. Those are amazing. They, as soon as you start applying them, you can see them. It's not those that just have a, such a slight wash of color that you can't see anything. You can see them as soon as you apply them, but you can build them a bit more. That comes to a point where they don't build anymore, any longer, any more depth, but they still do build quite well and they blend effortlessly. If you want to just pack on an eyeshadow, some of them you hardly need a blending brush just to wipe off the edges because it's already blended. They're that beautiful. They blend very well with each other. They mesh very well with each other. Beautiful performance. You will see me applying uh, the products. And then I was a little bit less impressed with the metallic color. Uh, the metallic color for me, it looks really beautiful with the lights on. Um, it looks quite impactful like this. If I do this, you can see, and it looks like a very beautiful taupey metallic. But what I find on the skin is that it looks a bit more lackluster than it appears with these bright lights just shining down on them. And it's a bit more lackluster, more powdery, and it almost looks like a satin. I would say a satin, you know? The velvets are matte with a bit of creaminess to them, that blur, and this is more of a a satin metallic. Now the eyeshadow that really, and I have to say this, really disappointed me was the top coat. In this case is Illusionism. This top coat is really thin. Um, again, with the bright lights, it may be reflecting very well, but on the eyes, it's completely underwhelming. I know that being a top coat it's supposed to have a very um, sheer base or transparent base and just have those glimmers there. But even on its own, on the eyes, it's a bit underwhelming. And then when you apply it on top of something else, you're waiting for that just touch of wetness and the, the, it, it isn't there. It's just very shy very coy, very coy. These more shiny colors are very coy, I would say, very subtle. Yeah, I was hoping for a bit more, I'd say, um, just so you know. And from touching the, I sometimes use a brush and sometimes use my fingers, but it feels like this is becoming hard panned, which I do not approve of, in my humble opinion, just so you know. So that's my first delivery regarding the performance of the products. Now let 
let's just watch me apply them on my face. I'm not going to call it a tutorial. Who am I to tutorialize anything? I'm going to call it an application demonstration. <laughs> and let's roll the tape. Now I'll be right back. So I'm going to start with Victorian trim, which is the magenta color. Packing it on a packing brush. This is a Zoeva Lux Smoky Shader. Can't see the number, it's worn out. Taking a little bit on the right on the tip of a brush to reach my lash line. and bringing it a bit above my crease, my natural crease, because otherwise everything would be, <laughs> would disappear. And I'm going to take a clean brush and just blend it out. As you can see, even on just um, the primer side, which doesn't have any powder to dry it out, this is blending seamlessly. So two brushes and you have a one all over shade on your eye. Very easy. Pack it on with one. When there isn't much color left on the brush, just bring it up and blend. It just blends seamlessly. Keep your uh, blending brush really soft and you'll be good to go. So there you go. This is my one and done go-to look. I'm just gently stretching out my lid because I have some, you know, cracks. <laughs> so I want to fill them all in. And again, place most of the color where I want it and then when there isn't much left on the brush, bring it upwards, making sure I look straight ahead into the mirror to decide where I want it to end. And then with my clean brush, just blending it all out. Straight up, the performance is absolutely astonishing. I'm then gonna go with, what's the name? Mauve Decade, which is the taupey color here, above the purple, and just apply a tad bit on the outer edge here of the lid. just to see if I can get a bit of depth. But because I've packed the magenta color, I don't have lots of hope. Yeah, I, I'm getting a little bit of shading when comparing both sides. And then I'm gonna go again, wiping off my blending brush and blending it all. And because this has, this is a taupe with a lot of purple underneath, it goes very well with the magenta. Just to neutralize the magenta a bit on the top, although I really like just one color smoked out. Just giving options here. Now I'm going to take a pencil brush from Ruffa. This is the tiny one, number 03. It's not the tiny one, I think it's the medium one. And I'm going to, again, pick up the magenta color. And bring it, bring it under the eyes, just like so, all around. Connecting on the outer corner. So there you go, this is it. 
Now I'm going to take the brush that I was using with the taupey color and I'm going to take um, Violet's Tone, yes, which is the purple, just on the outer corner. Again, this is just adding to a look that I would have left just with the pink. I'm just going to deepen out this outer corner here with a bit of this purple. I'm just loading the brush because I really wanted to add some contrast here. There you go. I'm getting fallout under here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. And it's a bit annoying because when you try to remove it, it just smears. It doesn't pick up easily on the brush. But it's super easy to apply. As you can see, hardly needs a blend, but I will take care of that in a minute. Picking up my blending brush again. I have been um, cleaning it up on just a towel here. It's just stained at this moment. It doesn't have any pigment to it. Just keeping the edges clean. Going between the purple. I haven't reloaded the brush, just what's left in it. And then going in with a blending brush. There you go. Same on this side. And I'm going to take the magenta again, just bringing it into the transition area. There you go. So my eye, this eye is watering, so don't fault the eyeshadow for that. It's my eye that is not cooperating today. Mm. So annoying when that happens. Well, we will not have a perfect outer corner on this side, it seems. I'm going to take the same tiny pencil brush and I'm going to take a bit more of the purple, tapping it out and just blending it into the outer corner. Hope you can see it's deepening out that area. Just creating a little bit of a haze. I hope you can see on the outer corner here, but give still giving the magenta color the you know the spotlight. Just adding a bit more of the magenta. I'm going to take a flat uh, synthetic brush and I'm going to pick up Illusionism, which is the um, top coat shade. And at this point, I really have to get into that because hardly anything is coming onto the uh, brush. I would have leave this as is. I love my matte. Uh, shades. I wanted to show you a bit of how it performs as a top coat and I hope you can see it's a very thin scattered tiny flecks of shimmer yeah a bit of fallout with that shimmer it's gonna spray the brush to get a little bit of grip I'm just gonna pick up the shimmer Oh, this was violent. Just okay, a bit better. I'm just gonna do it on the center of the lid, and I hope you can pick up that. It's a little gleam, it's nothing super punchy. So adjust your expectations. It's not going to bring you lots and lots of sheen. Should I put a bit of, just because of the texture? Yeah, although I think this look is good as is, I'm just going to press again onto my outer corner, um, Faded Amethyst, which is this sort of um, 
metallic purplish taupe. Just applying a little bit of this onto my outer corner. And I actually find when this is blended with a magenta color, it sort of gets really close to the um, to the purple that's in here, to the deeper purple, but with a, a different finish. So I'm applying this on the outer third, I'd say, and then I'm going to go again with a bit of the purple right on the corner. Just pressing it in, making inward motions, yeah. So now you have a little bit of all the textures um, in the look. This outer corner we are going to ignore <laughs> because it's crying. Cry, cry, shame. But this one looks good, so let's focus on this one, okay? <clears throat> and yeah, I'm just not going to use the dark and darkest color, which is somewhere between a really deep grey or almost black and a plum. Uh, but I think, oh dear lord, you are terrible, terrible. Naughty, naughty eye. She says she's not going to try and fix it whilst trying to fix it. I know. I'm just going to do my eyeliner and mascara and I'll be back. I'm going to try to flick off the... Um, <laughs> oh no. Can you see that? It's staining my face. Uh, yeah, as I said, this is not the most flickable fallout. Uh, so I'm going to have to clean it with a wipe <clears throat> and redo my makeup. So start with your eyes first. This. For this palette, you should start with your eyes first, my friends. Tis what tis. I'm going to have to redo my, my face makeup. I didn't have any, any under eye concealer, but still, it's not enough. It fell really a lot, up to down to here. It's removing all my makeup. I really needed that. Okay, I'm going to redo my makeup and we'll chat. Okay, so you've seen me apply uh, the products and the products, the eyeshadows. And you've noticed these perform gorgeously, gorgeously. As I said, there's a limit to which you can build the intensity of the velvets. So they look just on the skin a bit sheerer than they can look on the pan, especially the darker shades they look brighter on the skin. But this darker one, which I haven't used today, it's close to black and you can smoke it out. It's really easy to, again, super easy to apply. They work beautifully. They blend beautifully. These are absolutely effortless to apply and they blend on themselves. You don't need to have skills. You don't need to practice for too long in front of your mirror to get it right, you know? super easy. You don't, he, you don't need to stay long uh, doing very lots of brush work to make it look good. You just slap it on, slightly blend it if you're into it, and just slightly wipe off the edges and you're good to go. So the velvets for me are amazing, beautiful, beautiful colors and formulas. The other two one is okay, which is a metallic, it's fine. It's a fine metallic. I like a bit more gleam on my metallics. I like a bit more metal on my metallics, you know what I mean? And then the top coat for me was a bit of a disappointment. I have top coats from other brands that are still top coats, but they have lots of gleam to them, which I miss from this one. Now, all in all, You've seen this, these perform beautifully, and I only had great things to say about it. But there's one thing that I think is lacking in the conversation regarding these eyeshadows specifically, 
it's not a conversation, you know, it's, it's just when you watch people reviewing this on YouTube and Instagram, most of those people, this is their job and they have to make it their job. They can't just post one video a week and sometimes skip a couple of weeks. <laughs> they have to pump out content constantly. Um, fortunately, that's how YouTube evolved. You need to really make lots of content to stay relevant and you need to show as many new things as you can in most cases. So you're reviewing upon reviewing upon reviewing upon reviewing and showing new thing after new thing after new thing. For most, this is for most creators. So most of the reviews, where I want to get at is most of the reviews that you watch here from people who can get their stuff in time, <laughs> in a timely fashion, these are first impressions from people that will probably have to remove that makeup and move on to the next look on that day and do two or three or four looks in one day to record everything or shoot or photograph everything, edit and keep their line of work moving, you know? So there's some things that may be amiss. And one thing that I haven't heard anyone discuss up until now, I may be wrong, I haven't watched the whole of the internet, is something that concerned me a bit, which is the longevity of these eyeshadows on the eyes. Keep in mind, I have oily lids, but I have been able to manage to wear eyeshadow for all of these years uh, without having the problems that I've had with this specific palette. And I'm just talking about this palette. I don't know anything else about the others. So keep that in mind, which is on the first day, I was so excited as I usually do, I forgot to apply primer. I did a great look, super effortless, super easy. I use about four colors, super happy. And four hours later, I see myself in the mirror and there's hardly anything on my face. Everything had faded basically to nothingness except for a little line of, uh, <laughs> of twinkles from the top coat just put, just shoved inside my crease and that was it. Now it's kind of like this is not happening. I happened to go home for lunch. I reapplied my eyeshadow. And in the evening I had a dinner and I went and looked at the mirror, mirror before leaving and it had faded again, not entirely, but it had faded quite a bit. So I felt the need to reapply this. Whereas usually, if I don't apply primer, I have a bit of creasing, but I can go in, dabble and dab it back in place or have a bit of fading, but it's still there throughout the day. It doesn't fully disappear. So I was a bit concerned. The next day I used a primer, of course, and the, different, the difference wasn't that much. I think these cream to powder formulas like the velvets are so emollient and that's why they blend on themselves so easily that they lend themselves, on the other hand, to be really fadeable. <laughs> they can just start to, with the motion and the friction of your eyes and just the weather and the wind and all that stuff, um, they just start to blend to nothingness. And that's my theory regarding this product. The way, just don't lose your hope. The way I found it worked the best for me is to apply primer and then set the primer with powder, which is something I don't do often because that adds some texture to my lids, some dryness to my lids, and usually colors and pigments grip onto the primer and they last longer and it wasn't happening. So applying a bit of powder on top of the primer a powder with a very thin powder with, with a bit of pigment. I have NYX HD here, banana powder. That was the trick for me that made the eyeshadows last longer. On the other side, the shiny ones, so the metallic and the top coat, lost a bit more of their gleam, of their shininess because of that kind of matte base, so that you know. So 
it is manageable, but it takes a bit more work than maybe you would be expecting. This was my experience. Maybe it's not yours. Just keep that in mind. But I really wanted to add this because there may be people still considering this eyeshadow palette. And in my opinion, if you have the same issues as I do and you can't afford to risk a dud, because some people can't afford to risk that, if you're in London, just drop by the pop-up shop and try and apply the products and see how they wear throughout the day. That would be the perfect situation, but not being able to maybe order one or two eyeshadows that you're really interested in, try them out. You'll spend 14 or 28 euros. You're not be, you will not be spending 60 right off the bat without knowing if they work for you. That would be my advice. Mm, it's your choice. Do whatever you want. And, and this is a beautiful product. They perform amazingly, but it may be a concern for more people. And I actually got in touch with a couple of influencers that actually still re reply to their to their subscribers. And I chatted a, a few lines with them and I said, I, I've been having this happening to me. And they said, yeah, I've been having this happening too. So it's not just me. Maybe not to the same degree with other people, but it's not just me. So keep that in mind because it may be a deal breaker for you and it may not be. If you just want a palette to use on special occasions for, you know, going out and spending good times for four or five hours. If you don't have oily lids, I can't speak to that. You know, there are many, many circumstances in which this is not a deal breaker for you. So I'm just putting it out there that, so that you can make the most informed decision that I, with the information that I can provide and just check out other people, check out other creators and see what they have to say because it's always important to have more than one version um, or more than one opinion. And the closest that that person um, is or the closest that person's skin type is to yours, the better. That's what I meant to say. So yeah. But yeah, if you have experienced this or not, what if you have bought the Lisa Eldridge palette, let me know your experience in the comments below because that's the main thing. I have, am enjoying this palette with the big caveat that I really need to prep my eyes for these shades, at least these velvets that uh, come in this palette. So it's a pretty okay, but not amazing review from my end. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, again, as usual, thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next from me. Chat with me on Instagram at The Frivolous. And as usual, thank you for spending your time on me and I'll see you on my next video. Have a lovely day. Bye.